Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video I'm going to share with you my Sola Notes fragrance collection and I'm going to rank them for you from my least favorite to my most favorite. So if you'd like to know about the fragrances from Sola Notes Paris that I have in my collection and which ones I absolutely love, then keep watching. Now for transparency purposes, I purchased these and I've fallen in love with this house. This is a really affordable, accessible house. You can find these for $20 at Target and Amazon and a variety of other places. They're very affordable and for the price point, the fragrances themselves are really great. They're beautiful to wear on their own, they're beautiful to layer, and I've been kind of treating them like Pokemon where I'm getting them all, even if some of them I'm not as super excited for as the others, but I do genuinely like them. I believe I own every single one except for Iris and for Pomegranate. Now, I tried to order Iris and they kept sending me musk for some reason. So I don't have Iris, but I, I need to get it because I really want it. And Pomegranate is the next one I'm gonna get the next time I'm at Target. So um, hopefully I will have all of them very soon. Um, I'm just really very excited about these scents. Now, I'm not going to go into notes because these are um, fragrances that are, obviously there's a composition, there's a blend, there's a formula to these to mimic the style of this singular idea. So either rose or magnolia or jasmine or musk, there's a blend of different notes and accords to come together to create uh, these scents. The nicest thing about these fragrances are generally all of them have great longevity they smell really good, they're super accessible, and if you are a blender or you love to layer your fragrances, some of these are the best fragrances to have, and I will get into that too at the end of the video, uh, just to have if you like to blend and just kind of create your own layering combos. These are great fragrances to have in your fragrance wardrobe to be able to do that. Now, like I said, I'm going to be um, talking about these from my least favorite to my most favorite. Just because some of these are, I don't like them as much as the others, doesn't mean that I don't like these fragrances. The one that I'm not ranking, and I'll share right now, is the newest one to my collection. I've only had this one for like a week. I haven't worn it enough to really figure out exactly how I feel about it, but I do like it. And it's the Blackberry. And I found this at TJ Maxx for like six bucks. I was really excited. I do like it and I do think this is more of a layering one than wearing on its own, but I do enjoy this one a lot. So now that I've shared that, let's get into the rest of I think the 15 fragrances I have to share with you. Now the, the lowest on the ranking isn't because it's a bad fragrance, but for me it's less of a standalone scent and more of a layering component when I decided which was my favorites. The ones that are higher up aren't just good fragrances that layer well, they're good standalone fragrances. Number 15 is Musk. Now this is a great Musk fragrance. This doesn't have that super strong, kind of challenging, almost burning your nose musky scent. It's very light and very effervescent on the skin. The reason why this is more of a layering scent for me is that it doesn't have as much power as some of the other fragrances do. It smells very light on the skin, but not light in a complete way. Layering this with some of the white florals or even layering this with some fragrances that are woody, I've really enjoyed. I do really like this one, but it's a standalone scent. It's more of a layering fragrance and less of a standalone like fragrance you would want to wear by itself. Number 14 is one that I do enjoy, but there's just better ones that kind of are the same thing throughout the fragrances, and it's Tiare. This is a very tropical, beautiful um, white floral fragrance. The thing that makes this lower is there's a few other white florals that Solonotes does that I think are more successful. This is beautiful. This is great if you're looking for that kind of like beachy, floral, fun, youthful scent. It's really, really great. This is really nice layered with magnolia or with vanilla. It's a beautiful scent, but I don't think it's as successful 
on my skin, my personal opinion, than the other white florals in this group, but it is still a beautiful fragrance. Number 13 is Jasmine. Now, this one I had higher expectations for when I smelled other florals from this lineup. I do like this Jasmine though. It does smell really nice. It smells, it doesn't smell dated, it doesn't smell harsh, it smells Jasmine. But like some of the other florals in this group, I think this is a truer Jasmine than the Tiare flower. But I find that this is a good Jasmine. It's not a great Jasmine. It's a fantastic $20 Jasmine. But this kind of like musk smells like it's more of a blending fragrance than a standalone Number scent. Number 12, we have Cotton. This is supposed to be kind of like that clean laundry, very fresh scent. It's really nice. It's powdery, like baby powdery. And that's why it's a little bit lower. I wish it was more like fresh linen, fresh um, laundry scent and not exactly like the super baby powder smell, which don't get me wrong, I really like. But again, I do kind of wish this was a little bit more fresher laundry scent. That's why it's low, but it's still great. We have the, um, Cherry Blossom. This is the Cerciere. Cer I can never pronounce Parisian words, French words. I'm really bad at French. You can imagine me bad at pronouncing things. I know. Surprise, surprise. Oof. French is the worst. But this one is great. Now, the reason why this one isn't super high is this one, to me, smells less exactly like it, what it's supposed to be and more like an interpretation. And I find that cherry blossom, the idea of cherry blossom or sakura blossoms, that scent is so overly utilized in like novelty candles and bath soaps and things like that. I was hoping that they would take a more kind of literal approach to it and less of this kind of like slightly fruity floral um, baths gel vibe. It does smell really good on the skin though. Very clean, floral, feminine, fresh, very flirty and playful. A great scent, but compared to some of the other ones on top of the list, it's not as impressive as the other ones, but it is still really, really nice. And then we have Magnolia. Now this is a great, great uh, white floral from the line. It's low, because again, it smells like more of a blending agent, like you would add to another scent to layer to add more white florals or add a bit of maturity. This is probably one of the more mature fragrances from the line. It smells sweet and light, but it has a very specific magnolia white floral scent. So if you don't like that kind of very sophisticated, almost mature white floral scent, you're not going to like Magnolia. You won't. It, I would say stick with uh, Jasmine or even the Tiare flower if you want something more youthful and playful. But I like that this doesn't smell like random white flowers and it smells like Magnolia. So the fact that it smells like that and does it in a very kind of sophisticated way for a $20 perfume, I'm very impressed by. So that was number 10. So now we're in our top 10, obviously. Next, we have Frenji Penier. This is really, really nice. I like how light and pretty and sweet this is without being sickeningly sweet or too heavy on the florals. It's a really nice fragrance you can wear on your own and it blends really beautifully too. This is probably one of my favorite florals of the bunch. Obviously, it's in the top 10. Then we have Yuzu. Now, this one initially was higher up. But when I was thinking about doing this fragrance, I really wanted to think about not just me liking the scent, but what it represents. It's really easy to create a beautiful citrus scent. It's not one of the harder things to do. And that's why it's lower because this wasn't as much of a challenge as some of the other scents and fragrances are, but it's super successful. I like Yuzu because it's a really distinct citrus it's not quite a lemon, it's not quite an orange, it's not quite bergamot. It has a greenness to it, but it still has a slight sweetness to it too. It's really bright and uplifting, and I think this fragrance 
on its own it smells amazing and is a fantastic citrus scent if you're looking to kind of add a little bit of playfulness and brightness to some other fragrances that you have this is obviously number eight and the reason why it's not lower because I like a lot of these scents and citrus is something that's really easy to do is the fact that it's easy for citrus a very citrus dominant scent to smell like it's just a blending agent or to smell like it's just a rip off of light blue and it doesn't smell like light blue and it smells like a standalone fragrance and I'm really impressed by that so it is a great fantastic citrus scent probably better for spring and summertime but I do enjoy it and I do mix it and blend it and layer it with other fragrances if I want a bit of brightness. Next we have the Blanc, the white tea scent. This is beautiful. Now white tea, I don't know if you guys have ever tasted white tea actually, smelled white tea, tasted white tea. It, it literally doesn't have a flavor. It is very mild. It's like drinking water if you get a pure white tea, like a silver needle white tea very mild but when you're trying to transition that flavor and that smell to scent it would not smell very attractive now in creating and mimicking the idea of a white tea note you get this kind of beautiful lighter uh, more delicate green tea note is what i notice and that's what this has and that's something that i really like i like very much that this has tea notes in it, not white tea or green tea, just tea. And when I do my tea video, I will go way into that because I have very real thoughts and feelings on that. But it's very light on the skin. It's very attractive. Again, this is another uplifting fragrance. It pairs beautifully with yuzu. These two together are fantastic. They're so good. And I think this on its own is a beautiful fragrance. If you love tea fragrances and if you don't want to spend a lot of money on tea fragrances or you want something a little bit different, White Tea or the Blanc from Solo Notes is just fantastic. Then we have Rose and I love Rose. Rose is great. I talked about this. This is high up there just because it's a beautiful, affordable rose scent. There's really nothing more I can say to this. It's really, really nice. It doesn't smell dated. It doesn't smell too heavy. It's just a fresh, nice complimentary beautiful rose scent and if you can do that for 20 bucks because i've smelled some fragrances that are affordable rose fragrances that smell overpowering they smell too dated they smell too sharp that was just really nice and i think that deserves to be commended by being high on the list then number five we have pomelo now i've talked about pomelo pomelo is not grapefruit pomelo is completely different than a grapefruit although some people call pomelo grapefruit. It's grapefruit. It's pink grapefruit. Pomelo. Pomelos are large, large big things. And grapefruits and pink grapefruits and other varieties of citruses, they're different. Now the reason why I'm really focusing on pomelo, not specifically grapefruit, is a grapefruit note is going to smell very strong, very biting, very bitter, and sharp and just tangy and zesty. And it is a fantastic note in fragrances. I love it. I'm saying all these negative things, but it's a huge positive. A pomelo is slightly more rounded, slightly softer, slightly sweeter. And I love and love seeing that slight softness in citruses because it makes it sweeter. It makes it a little bit more playful and I think that pomelo from Solo Notes just really hits it out of the park and makes a beautiful, just kind of citrusy, grapefruity scent that isn't too sharp um, or too bright. It has a roundness to it, which is really now nice. Now we're at the top four. So number four is Fig. Great. I love Fig. Not everyone's going to agree with this being higher, and that's fine because everyone has their own opinion, their own taste, their own way that they like to smell, and the own way that they rank their lists. That's fine. But the reason why I like this is because fig is one of those notes that I find to be a great indication of if a fragrance house is doing a good job at creating a scent. Like white florals, it's really easy to get lost in the bounty of 
white flowers where they all smell the same and I like seeing that they're distinct. Fig too. Fig is a note that sometimes I feel people kind of have this idea in their head of what fig is. They've never seen a fig, but there's somebody in another room describing what a fig is and they're drawing it. And you know, that's what it smells like is somebody like three or four feet away is kind of whispering to them like this is what a fig is. And so they kind of create these fig fragrances that don't have the true heart of fig. Now figs can smell a variety of different ways depending on if you're losing fig leaves, fig milk, fig, things like that. And the thing with fig is fig is actually a flower. It's like an, an inverted flower. So I like just in my mind to have this idea of a sweet, fruity, floral fragrance. Now I like milky figs, I like green figs, and I like fresh figgy fragrances that are really light. And this is kind of, kind of fruity, floral, and figgy. So like a fresh fig, like right off the tree. And I, I love it, I think it's great. All right, we've got the top three. So first thing I'm gonna say is all the fragrances listed before, I do like them. Some I like more than others, some of them I prefer to layer. Some of them I think are great, but there's better ideas or examples of them higher up. So the next three that we have are my top favorites because on their own, I think that these are beautiful fragrances. They are perfect for layering. They're unique enough to be something very special, but at the same time, they're also just very wearable and just, I, I think they're great. So number three is Oranger. This is Orange Blossom. Now, if you guys do not know my love for Orange Blossom and Neroli, and those are two very different notes, I love Orange Blossom, and I think it is such a beautiful, sweet white floral. I grew up in South Florida. I know what orange trees smell like. I know what orange blossom smells like. It's a very nostalgic scent for me, something I greatly enjoy. And I see a lot of people, specifically very affordable fragrances, butcher this poor, beautiful note. Like I said, neroli is different. So I'm not saying this is a neroli scent. No, no, this is orange blossom. And it's just a beautiful, sweet, gorgeous, orange blossom. It's got a super sweetness to it, a little bit of a candy, kind of like a Pez-like sweetness to it. But if you've ever actually smelled like an orange tree, it kind of has that to it sometimes. You have to go real close to the tree though, and you have to be careful of the bees because they love those flowers. But it has that super sweetness, like that saccharine sweetness in there, which doesn't come off as like added sweetness, it just adds to the sweetness of the orange blossom. And this one, when I was considering the white florals, um, some people consider an orange blossom to be white floral, some people it's its own unique thing. I just love the fact that this smelled like such a beautiful, sweet, playful, just kind of flirty orange blossom scent. And it's something I love to wear. You can layer it, you can wear it on its own. It's just a fantastic scent. Definitely deserve to be at the top. Number two is vanilla. This one is so good. Now vanilla sometimes can smell, especially for inexpensive fragrances, can smell too much like buttercream, too much like frosting, which don't get me wrong, I like, but I like a vanilla. Like this smells to me like vanilla, like slightly creamy, it's a little bit musky, kind of just smells like a vanilla bean, like how you would imagine a vanilla bean would smell like. It's sweet, but not overly sweet. It's creamy, but it's not overly creamy. And it's got that beaniness to it, which I really like. And considering this is an affordable fragrance, I'm really blown away by this vanilla. It is fantastic to layer with other things. And I mean, fantastic. And just on its own, it's great. I love it. So good. And last and certainly and not least is Tonka. This is an exceptional fragrance exceptional. This to me smells not exactly like Tonka bean, but it has that beautiful softness, that muskiness, that powderiness, that beaniness. I, I don't know why I think everything smells like a bean. Definitely not my cat beans. My cat beans smell like cat beans. But this is just, to me, it's exceptional. It's beautiful. It's unique. And I just think it's soft and sweet. 
but there's like a presence to this scent. I just, it's an exceptional, exceptional spray. Two together, great, absolutely great. I will say this is slightly on the powdery side, so if you do not like powdery fragrances, run away from this. Um, then I would say probably go for vanilla. So that's my ranking of my Solo Notes fragrances. But what I also wanted to do is share with you my top five fragrances from Solo Notes for blending. I could have done this as a separate video, but I don't see the point because we're already talking about it right now. The reason why I wanted to share these five with you is because these are all fantastic fragrances you can layer with other Solo Notes scents. You can also layer these with a variety of different fragrances you might already have in your wardrobe, whether they're masculine fragrances, feminine fragrances, designer fragrances, niche fragrances, luxury affordable. These ones tend to blend very well with a variety of different scents. And so if you're looking to have fun and blend and just kind of be creative with your scents, I think one of these or all of these would be great additions to your fragrance wardrobe. So we have the Blanc. This tea fragrance is fantastic if you've got a citrus scent or a woody scent and you want that added little touch of tea, which sometimes adds some brightness and playfulness to scents, excellent. Yuzu is probably one of the best citruses to layer and just fits very well with most compositions I noticed. Just makes it more uplifting and bright. We have Jasmine. The reason why I like this one is sometimes some fragrances in white flowers, it needs a touch, I think, of Jasmine. Jasmine is kind of like, it's gonna sound weird, like the vanilla of the flower world, <laughs> where you add it to a lot of things and it adds a lot of emphasis or it kind of elevates or helps support some notes. And sometimes I'll smell a fragrance and think, I wish this just had a little bit of Jasmine in here to bring out this or to balance this. And a little bit of this actually does a really good job. So I do really like the Jasmine. Obviously the vanilla, this is just a fantastic fragrance to have and to blend with just about anything. It's fantastic on its own. Just add a creaminess, a more of an elegant gourmand element to something. And it just, the vanilla is such a pure vanilla. It's not like a kind of creamy or a frosting or anything like that. It just settles and blends really well with a lot of different fragrances. And musk. This one is fantastic. This was on the bottom of the list, not because it's a bad fragrance, because in my mind, this is purely a blending fragrance. You can literally mix this with any of the fragrances here before. And if you want something to little, be a little bit lighter, a little bit musky, a little bit more sitting on the skin lighter. I know I said lighter already. I'm talking way too long. My throat is hurting. But this is just a great scent if you want a fragrance to be lighter, brighter, more effervescent, a little bit more musky, and to kind of cut through heavier compositions and kind of make them maybe a little bit more daytime appropriate, a little bit more casual. It's a really, really good scent for that. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna stop talking now because my throat is on fire, and I think you guys are probably tired of me talking about Solanus fragrances, but I do hope you enjoyed this video. I, like I said before, I have never been reached out to Solo Notes. I purchased every single one of these fragrances myself. I have become a huge fan of it and I'm looking forward to hopefully adding the last two Solo Notes to my collection. But I would love to know what you guys think of these scents. Have you tried Solo Notes? Are you a fan of them? Are you not a fan of them? Do you agree with my ranking? What's your favorite combinations? What's your favorite Solo Notes? Let me know in the comment section below. As always guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye.